Back Home Media. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Kansas Missing and Unsolved podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Chabruggi, and joining me from Arizona is Derek. Again, how you doing tonight, Derek? Pretty good, man. How you been? No, not too bad. Just dealing with my no, own. That's, you're lying. You have two snakes loose in your house. Yes, you're I do. About. My daughter caught two garter snakes last night, two tiny ones, but they managed to both escape. And they're when you say with... tiny, how, how small? One of them was probably only about four inches long. It was a little skinny, little tiny. It must have been almost like a, a a baby one. And the other one was just a little bit bigger than that. So they weren't, I mean, the bigger one was probably about like that. And the other one was about like that. So, I mean, they were little. Just just burn it down and start over. Yeah. I've torn my bedroom apart trying to find the second one. And the first one got loose in her room. And Yeah, that's knows? scary, man. That's, that's scary. Who knows? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So no, Trish, uh, we got a we got a long show tonight. We got a heck of yeah, a show going on. Trish is joining us from YouTube again tonight from Hutch and Lori from Hayes and Lisa's watching from Galesburg, Illinois. Justice for Megan. Yeah, Megan Fogelsong. Wow, all the way from Illinois. Yeah. That's awesome. Share the show out. We'd love to uh see as many of our friends as possible tonight. We are on a little late. Yep. Just a little, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot to prep for tonight. Trust me. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I guess we won't we won't wait too long. We uh, we have a guest tonight, mm-hmm. and um, we're going to go ahead and bring that guest on, uh, Ricky. I guess before we bring her on, tell us a little bit about our our, our next guest. And well, uh, last August, I did a flyer for this young lady. She was missing last August, and she was located. And then she went missing again last November, and was located again. And she reached out to me last night because she wanted a copy of her flyer because she wanted to do a post last night talking about her experience and running off, you know, running away. And we got to talking a little bit, you know, during the the course of the conversation about the flyer and stuff like that. And asked her if she would like to come on tonight and talk about her experience and running away. And she said, yeah, sure. And so she's here with us tonight. And her name is Omega Evans. I'll go ahead and ring Omega. Go ahead and bring her on. Hello. Hey, Omega. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for coming on tonight. You're welcome. So, I guess um, tell us. Rick, Ricky had sent me a screenshot of this post. Um, it's probably way too small for the. Uh, it might be for the uh, people to see, but I guess tell us what what did you what did you mean to say in this post? I guess what is the what is the main purpose of this post that you made? The post was mainly because I keep seeing teens and other people come up missing and a lot of the teens that are missing right now are most likely in foster care and I was recently in foster care and I aged out and back in November I November 18th 2020 um I ran because I was running mainly for myself running from because I was self-harming and I didn't know what to do. Um, the home I was at wasn't the best either. They refused to get me help. And I kept begging them like, yo, y'all need to get me some help. If I don't, <laughs> what, what am I going to do? Continue? Most likely. So I ran. I was supposed to come visit my mom in Lawrence. And I didn't even get to see my mom because I took off. Well, that was November 18th. So I was staying with a friend for a few days. So I went to Kansas City, Kansas with a guy by the name of Travis McDonald. Well, he, uh, he was very abusive. Um, so I left him and got caught up in a lot of different stuff. Um, there's there's a woman with the name of Brianna Sherrod. Um, she and her, I think now ex boyfriend, were trying to sell me in a sex trafficking ring. Um, and it really broke my heart when I found that out because I thought I could trust her. Well, from that point, 
I met a guy by the name of Daniel from Helen through her. Well, his house was raided by the police. It was what they would call a drug bust. Um, and I tried lying, saying that my name was Lucy Wilson, which is my best friend I stayed with originally. When I first went back on the run, and it was pretty hard because I didn't want to go back to foster care, mm-hmm. but I also knew where I was wasn't safe. Well, let's talk a little bit about that because we do so many flyers and repeated flyers for people. Um, and people always ask us in the chat, like, why do these kids keep running? And one thing that's a common denominator with a lot of these runners is they are in foster care. I guess t- give us like a firsthand experience. Why Why are so many people running away from foster care? Getting ripped from your parents' arms. First time I was in foster care, I was ripped. So, just being away from people you love, people you even don't know how to feel about, but you've lived with them your, almost your whole life or whatever, you know, it, it's really difficult. And a lot of people, a lot of teenagers go back to their parents when they go on the run. But it was one of the things that it just depends, it depends on the person in their situation. So as a, a, like, okay, I don't know your situation, but as somebody who was removed from a parent, um, and these are probably based more on people, you know, because we, we've showed us a few flyers before the show and you knew a lot of these people on our flyers and you've met them at, at you know, foster care and places like that. Um, what, what are the, what are the thoughts on that? Because you have, you have kids basically being separated from their parents and then they go to foster care and then they run away and they go back to their parents, but somehow that's bad. Like, what is the thought process on, like, how do these kids feel whenever they're being punished for just going home? Well, so it's, so being put in foster care can be the child's fault or the parent's fault. So it can be both. Mm -hmm. So from that, if it's the parent's fault, that's why we, we get in trouble for going back to our parents. Now, if it's our fault, yeah, we still get in trouble. It's not as bad, though. So, people just don't think about it like that. So, when it, the parents abuse they know how to manu- ma- manipulate their children into coming back. Is it is it easy or hard to run? Because, like, you know, a, a person that doesn't know anything about it, you would just assume, like, okay, Omega's, like, hiding behind... Uh, like a store or something. I mean, you don't know where you go, but like, do you have to have like a network of people that are going to keep a secret and kind of ha- where do you go initially when you take off? Like, because we don't know. We just see these people take off. We have no idea if they're like hiding somewhere in the woods or, you know, if somebody's like, what, what is your first, what is your initial thing when you take off? So with me personally, I come up with a plan. I have friends who I know will house me for a fact. And then I contact them after I do it. So that way they can't get in trouble for knowing about it. Because even if you don't know that the person's on the run, but if you do know especially, so aiding and abetting. And that's a felony. So, you know, it's one of those things that people don't get, can't house people, but you have to really have a plan some people don't. Right. Some people do live in the woods, mm-hmm. like on right. the Yeah. So, like, I guess, uh, it, it looking in hindsight, well, I guess, I guess catch everybody up. Like, so you, you get in, you get in trouble. With, well, you don't really get in trouble. The person you're staying with gets in trouble with the law. So how do you, and then, and then you, and then you like, eventually you you're telling us you turned 18. So what, what, how does that sort of happen? You were, you're just in, you're in foster care. The, then you were telling me the day you turned 18, it was kind of like, well, have a good one. Like what was that situation with, when do you become, when are you the state's issue? And then when are you no longer the state's issue where they're just like, okay, see ya. So, okay, so every state is different. So like the state of Kansas, you can be in for 22 and a half, and then they have no choice but to release you. But there's also the fact that you have, if you're 18 through 21 or 22, 
Um, you can ask to be removed from foster care, and it's all up to the judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a uh, process you have to go through. Yep. I had to write, I had to hand write out a letter, sign it, and have my plan written out on it. Right. Saying I'm gonna be on my meds. I'm gonna do therapy. I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And I signed it, and I think I had a good enough plan. Like he was like, my judge finally said, "Okay, so you're trying to get your life together." So that's awesome. So, so what do you what do you do? Like, um, because again, we we deal with with missing people all the time, but we're we're not super close. You know, Ricky had a, a daughter that was missing for like half a day, and it was it scared the bejesus out of yeah, him. Yeah, it did. It did. But you know, it's like we, we don't we're not super close to this, so. Um, whenever you turned 18 and you sort of were on your own, like what kind of resource, were there any resources that you were told about or offered as far as, you know, making sure that you stay on a good path? Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So there's the thing called aftercare benefits with foster Mm -hmm. care, but you have to age out to get them. You get free college, completely free. They pay for the fees, tuition, everything. So you're 21, you get free medical insurance. Uh, cool. so, you're, so you're 21 you get a lot of like and you even get if you depending on the situation and depending on what home you go to is mainly what the benefits depend mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. me personally i was in independent living for the last mm, couple months i was in foster care so i was called a dcsil caseworker and I would get seven hundred dollars a month if I had a full time job right now. Wow. For anything I could possibly ever need or want. I get twelve hundred dollars for car repairs if I had a vehicle and the license. I get six hundred dollars for first month rent and deposit. Stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of see, I didn't know any of that. I didn't know I was I thought it was just like, well, it was nice helping you out now that you're 18. See, I mean, I, that's really great that there's there's a ton of resources for you and stuff. And I think that's really like a newer thing because back when I was first in foster care when I was six, that wasn't a thing. Yeah. I want to bring up a couple of comments real quick. Last night when we were talking, um, I sent you that link to the thing said Omega is safe, that article. And that lawless from Cake News actually wrote that article for her Missing in Kansas segments that she does. And she's actually commented and she said she's so glad to see you're on here tonight and it's wonderful to see you're doing okay. And then she asked, uh, what are your plans from here on out? My plan help my nieces. I have four beautiful nieces, the oldest is seven. Um, to help them realize that what they're going through with their parents isn't the end of the world. The way I thought it was. Yeah. I want them to achieve every dream. So I'm going to do what I can to be the best role model for them. Yeah. So I mean, getting a job, going to college, stuff like yeah. that. Anything to make my nieces say, she did it and her life was complete, her complete wreck. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know, I know some kids do run because they don't necessarily agree with mom or dad's rules and they're just like, well, I'm not putting up with that. I'm out of here. You well, know? I was going to ask you that. Do you feel like that a lot of that is um, that foster parents are mean people or do you feel like it's the mixture of they're trying to keep things with some sort of law and order and some sort of structure, which has been proven? Stru- I have I have bipolar disorder and I know that if I don't have structure, I'm not firing on all cylinders. So I see how a lot of foster parents try to instill that structure into, you know, like the way we do things. But is it is it literally just there's too much tough love from foster parents? So kids are like, I want to get out of here. This is boring. Or is it that is it like that it's something deeper than that, that some foster parents are like rude and mean and and uh, not not nice to these kids? It can be both, actually. Um, a lot of foster parents are just in it for the money. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I've been told that by a, a foster parent in the past. Really? That they're in it for the money. Mm. And But my thing is, <laughs> if they're going to do <clears throat> what they do for the money, don't do it. Because you're right. going to end up being the meanest, meanest, and possibly abusive mm-hmm. foster parent. 
but yeah, yeah a lot of it a combination and yeah. I don't and honestly anybody that does it for the money that's, that's just something I don't get like there's a lot of things you can do for money that are I mean first of all you're taking a, a child away from their parents so that's just going to put them in a, in, a, in a very vulnerable emotional state and then you're trying to get along like I can't imagine that's easy money to earn as a foster parent. Like when you have your, I mean, it, I, I don't know many foster kids that have like a, Oh, it was great at my foster home. You know, it wasn't like necessarily bad, but you know, it's like, there's a lot of tension because there's a lot of like me and Ricky talk, he has two daughters and there's tension in his house. You know, every, every household where you have teenagers and adults, mm-hmm. there's tension. When yeah. you have two people that don't know each other, it's added tension. So, and you know, if you're I, if you if you recall, my daughters were both adopted from foster care. We adopted them when we were when we were doing foster care. So, I was a yeah. foster parent for a time. <laughs> but I mean, you've had you've had your girls forever, and I'm, I mean, oh, yeah. like, they were like, little little. It, it, you know, it's a vault. Being a teenager uh, and then being a parent of a teenager is is a double learning experience. Yeah. I think for everybody involved. Yeah. But uh, what what um we we do got to get onto some cases. Um, yeah. but Omega, it's been awesome that you stopped by. What advice do you have to? Because we actually know that a lot of people on the flyers we post watch this show. Um, like they'll contact us later and tell us and stuff. What do you say to anybody that might be on the on the show tonight that that might that might be out there on on the on the land? Get help now. Don't wait. Don't do anything stupid, especially if you're with anybody who does drugs or anything, because they are dangerous people. They will do anything to either hurt you or hurt people you love if you do them wrong. Yeah. Get to the nearest police station, turn yourself in, and go back to where you were. And, and well, I wanted to ask you too. Like, so, say you're in a position where you're not happy with your foster care. I mean, but to me, and again, I wouldn't have been able to do this when I was 16, 17 years old. But as a 38 year old man, I'm just like, wow. Even if you're in a place that you don't like the rules, you don't get along with the, it's it's a place to to sleep at night, and you can work on yourself because when you turn 18, the rules change. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. You know, you can go to school, you can get a job, you know, you can live in the park, whatever you want to do at 18. It's like you can do it. So, uh, you know, I I don't know. I think that a, a lot of people should realize that. You know, going like you're saying, going back and just sort of working on yourself. You know, nobody's saying you have to have a great time. You know, but go go back, be somewhere safe where we know where you are, and and you know, because me and Ricky know there's so many people that are missing right now, and it's, oh, yeah. it's scary. Oh yeah, it is scary, and I just hope someone listens to my advice. Yeah, that's good advice. I hope they do too. I mean, well, this, this is the voice of experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. Well, and we I, appreciate you uh, stopping by the show. Ricky, did you have any final questions? or? No, and I'm just really glad she joined us tonight, and I'm glad she reached out to me last night and asked for that flyer, and you know, it was really cool. Yeah. I don't get that too often, but that was really nice of you to do. Yeah, I appreciate it, it that. Ricky's day. It well, did. Omega, it was nice meeting you. Uh, feel free to reach out to Ricky's page anytime. Let us know how mm-hmm. you're doing. We're pulling for you. Yeah. Yeah, and you're more, welcome, you. You, you're more than welcome to hang out while we're covering cases if you want to or whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. All right. right. We'll see you back. We're watching the Cannes Missing Us All podcast. We'll be right back after this. If you or someone you know is a victim of human trafficking, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373-7888. All right. That was actually amazing. I'm glad she joined us tonight. That was awesome. Yes, it was. We're going to start off with Aaron Horn. He is missing from Atchison, Kansas, since May 21st of 2021. 17 years old. He's five foot five, weighs 120 pounds. He has blonde hair and blue eyes. If you have any information regarding Aaron's disappearance, you know his whereabouts, please call the Atchison, Kansas Police Department at 913-367-4323 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 800-843-5678. And just for those uh, podcast listeners and live viewers, Ricky is a little under the weather with some allergies. So. Yeah, stupid allergies. He's just, just uh, you can just kind of, you can kind of hear it in his voice a little bit tonight, but he's, he's rocking and rolling with us, but he's not sick. He's just got some allergies. Yeah. 
Hopefully, I don't sneeze. Just have a sneezing fit while we're doing these. You tonight. remember you have a mute button, right? You just click that yeah. microphone next to oh, your face. Yeah. I don't want to blow anybody's ears out. Norm on the show, he always lifts his mic to cough and stuff. I'm like, you have a mute button, Norm. Like, <laughs> he's figuring it out. He's figuring it out. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So let's All talk right. about Alexandra Homer. All right. I feel I like we covered go. her before. We might have. I don't honestly remember. Right. She's missing from Parsons, Kansas since May 14th of 2021. I think I might have added a picture or two. I don't remember now, but I think I did. Um, she's been missing since May 14th, 2021. She's 16 years old. She is 5'7 to 5'8, weighs between 140 and 150 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes, and it's believed she may be in the McCune or Pittsburgh, Kansas areas. If you have any information regarding Alexandra's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Parsons, Kansas Police Department, 620-421-7060, or the KBI at 785-296-4017. I hope you guys didn't hear my daughter yelling at my dog in the background. <laughs> I just heard like a, ah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like, hear much. Yeah, she's like, Maya, <laughs> <laughs> which is my, my little chihuahua. So this has been two months almost coming on. Yeah, yeah. And about 13. I think we have covered her. Yeah, and I think I was asked to reshare it because they're really trying to get information on her. Yeah. Okay. Why isn't she if anybody's there? seen, if anybody's seen her, you know, contact Kansas Missing on a soft page, or go ahead yeah. and uh, reach out to, uh, you know, the KBI. <clears throat> a lot of people you can contact. Now, this oh, one's yeah. kind of a. There are so many pictures, so I put as many as I could on here. We were in a very crunch time tonight, so pardon for the the way this flyer looks. But uh, go ahead with Amanda Ann. Yeah, we're gonna travel out of state for her, and I gotta find her on my list here. Got so many of them. Okay. Amanda and Degu- I guess it's Deguio. I'm, I'm going to go with that. She's missing from Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania since June 3rd of 2014. Uh, she was 24 when she was missing. She's 31 now. She is 5 foot 1 to 5 foot 3 inches tall, 100 to 120 pounds, brown hair and blue eyes. Uh, she was, uh, as I mentioned, went missing from Drexel Hill on June 3rd, 2014. She was last seen on June 3rd, 2014. After she returned home from a family trip to Disney World in Florida, she left her mother's home without her cell phone, credit cards, or extra clothes and never returned. Uh, she didn't drive at the time of her disappearance, and it's unclear how she left. About a week after Amanda went missing from her family home, she allegedly picked up a prescription for OxyContin at a pharmacy that had been prescribed for someone else. As a result, a warrant was issued for arrest for identity theft and receiving stolen property. She had a prior record for retail theft. Authorities believe she was involved with prostitution at the time of her disappearance. Her sister found an escort advertisement for Amanda's services on the website Backpage.com, which we all know that's a notorious page for uh, sex work ads as well as trafficking ads. She's been known to frequent the Upper Darby, Clifton Heights, and Overbrook neighborhoods of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She suffers from bipolar. She became addicted to opiates after she suffered complications from childbirth and was prescribed a painkiller Percocet. By the time of her disappearance, she reportedly progressed to heroin. The man has been known to leave for several days at a time, but she's never been gone for this long, and she kept in touch with her mother and two younger daughters. Because of her lifestyle, she's presumed to be at risk, and foul play is suspected in her case. She does have the following tattoo, um, lips on her right buttock, the shape of Italy with the words La Vida Bella in script above it on her right side, the name Tommy under her right breast, the letters SC on her ring finger, and the letters MF on the inside of her lower lip. Her ears are pierced. She has a diagonal surgical scar on her middle upper abdomen. Her teeth were in poor condition at the time of her disappearance. If you have any information regarding her disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Upper Darby Township, Pennsylvania Police Department at 610-734-7693. And see if we can't get some information going on, on her and where she might be or what might have happened to her. I always get nervous whenever I, our, missing pick, our missing person flyer involves mug shots. Yeah. Anytime there's like drugs, which I mean, like, drug addiction and missing people, I just get nervous. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, you just all you have to say is drugs, prostitution, 
Percocet. Yeah. Nightmare. You just put those three things in a room, it ruins somebody's life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, then she pro- and it sounds like she progressed to heroin. So, yeah, I mean, it's just though it was a recipe for disaster. And I, I know whenever, as soon as I clicked on this, I'm like, oh, the two on the left look like mugshots. So there's obviously some yeah. issue with crime. And then you talk about the process. So it's like, I just, yeah, you know, it's like, it, you know, Amanda was at the, uh, sounds like she was in a bad spot in her life. Yeah. And, one thing that I want to point out is like when you're in a spot that low and you go missing ten, you know, sadly the people you were probably associating with probably aren't going to be much of help looking for you. I mean, just it depends on the kind of company you keep and stuff. And if she was in the throes of addiction and all that, I mean, who knows if she had a good friend. Right. I just hope wherever she's at, she's okay. And she's safe. No, yeah. it's a little worrisome when they fear the foul play might be involved. That's a little worrisome. Yeah. Let's hope not. And it's really sad. You see that picture on the far right. Yeah. She looks young, healthy, and vibrant. And you go all the way to the left, and it's just like, oh, Amanda. Yeah. Poor girl. Yeah. Joe Hernandez, Smoke Nation Worldwide, out of Phoenix, Arizona, says exactly, prayers going out. (laughs) Tell us about... Blake. Blake Dwyer. He is missing from Wichita, Kansas since June 26th of 2021. He's 15 years old, uh, six foot tall, 150 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes. He was last seen on June 26th at approximately 11 p.m. that evening. If you have any information regarding Blake's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011, or KBI at 785-296-4017, and see if we can't get some information generated as to where he's at so he can get uh, get him back to where he needs to be. I mean, he's 15, shouldn't be out there, you know, running at 15. No. A little young. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit young. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, Joe, thank you. Appreciate that. See a friend of yours or Yeah, he's uh he runs a uh a group here in Phoenix that's really large. Oh, okay. A nationwide group, yeah. Cool. It's a cannabis group, but he's oh, okay. he's all about helping us find missing people. That's he good. might just be a little stoned when he does it, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> uh this one uh this one, I was, uh, you know, I get I get worried when I see people that are a little older that are missing. Um, I saw when I was pulling this one up today, it kind of hit me a little bit. What, what do we yeah. know about this case? Well, I did some before the show to see if, if this was still accurate that she's missing, and she is. And Blanche Merriman is missing from Independence, Missouri, since June 29th, 2021. She's 70 years old. She's five foot four, 180 pounds, brown hair and blue eyes. She left her home in the 1000 block of North Cottage Avenue in Independence, Missouri. She's believed to have left on foot in an unknown direction. She has mobility issues and walks very slowly. She does have various medical issues. Um, The clothing she was wearing at the time of her disappearance is unknown. So if you have any information regarding Blanche's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call 911 immediately or call the Independence, Missouri Police Department at 816-836-3600. And scanning through the comments on the Independence Missouri Police Department's Facebook, um, there was some speculation by some folks in there that she might have been actually abducted at some point, but I don't think there's anything to substantiate that, but somebody seems to think that. <clears throat> so I don't know if there's anything I mean, but, to I mean, what is What is Blanche's mental state like? Is this like a silver alert? Or I mean, is this she, she, is we worried? Like, is this like somebody who's act like she doesn't look like she would, you know, be like a silver alert situation where she like got confused and wandered off? You know, look, I would be kind of like she looks just like very lucid. So it makes Mm -hmm. me nervous that, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know anything about the situation, but she doesn't look like somebody who would like get confused and walk away. So, it's either she's gone on her own volition or maybe somebody, you know, did something. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, she doesn't look like somebody who, uh, and, you know, and I understand she's 70, but that's not that old. You know, my mom's like 67. 
um ricky right. no i'm just kidding Ricky. <laughs> no but <laughs> no, not yet <laughs> but uh no, i mean she doesn't you know she looks very lucid you know what i mean yeah let me look at i'm gonna look on the independence missouri's facebook real quick here yeah, and see what I can find. Or yeah, they, they issued it. They issued it as a silver alert. That's why I use oh, the silver, silver alert. alert. Yeah. Um, now, what does silver alert mean? Does that mean like a dementia situation, or does it just mean an elderly person's missing? I was under the assumption it was like uh, a senior citizen with med- you know medical issues. See, that's what I thought. Like somebody who might maybe not like dementia, but maybe somebody who gets low oxygen and they lose a little bit of their, you know, their focus. Like I always thought silver alert was like somebody who was elderly, who was needing medical attention, you know, IE more than likely confused. Um, but again, I don't know her situation, but looking at her picture, you know, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know, but if it's silver alert, silver alert, that's still very, yeah. Bill, still very concerning. No, yeah, yeah. Um, Everything I have on the flyer was what Independence put out, and they didn't say anything about any kind of dementia, Alzheimer's, or anything like that. I look. Candace Ann Dudley but, says maybe Alzheimer's or dementia. That's what I was thinking hey, too. It's possible. It's possible. Beverly Fox Williams says any of the children found in KC found on your missing list. I haven't heard names, so I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to release names, being that they're juveniles. But I'm sure. I Why may don't you find talk out about that. that real quick? Yeah. It was a, uh, let me get to that article here real quick. Here. Yeah, let's go over that. Yeah. I posted it on the page earlier today. They did a big trafficking sting in the Kansas City and Wichita areas. And they just recently wrapped it up. Minnesota. And there we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, okay, got it. And the total of... Uh, 81, I believe, were arrested. 81 um, people arrested? Yeah. yeah, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says a recent human trafficking operation in Wichita, Independence, Missouri, and Kansas City, Missouri, re- resulted in the rescue of 31 human trafficking, including 14 missing children for sexual exploitation. I said in a news release the youngest child was four years old and 17 of the victims were adults. Operation took place June 17th through the 26th and resulted in the arrest of 82 suspects who will be charged with crimes related to the soliciting prostitution, commercial sex trafficking, sodomy, narcotics violations, felony assault on a police officer, sex offender registry violations, and outstanding warrants. No names were released. Uh, let's see. KNBC out of Kansas City reports on Homeland Security in Kansas City along with HSI Wichita. The Wichita Police Department, the KBI, Kansas Highway Patrol, Health and Human Services, U.S. Marshal Service, Platte County Sheriff's Office, Independence Police Department, Jackson County Sheriff's Department, Missouri State Highway Patrol, the Bourbon County Sheriff's Office, and the Hutchison Police Department conducted the operation. So lots and lots of law enforcement agencies you know involved. You know what's, uh, first of all, what a great planet we live on, you know, where the sex telling, trapping, isn't that neat? Anyway. That's just the one that we've caught. Like, if you think about it, how many how many of these operations are going on that we haven't caught? But you know yeah, what, Ricky? True. I'm going to say this, true. dude. And I, this isn't against you know law enforcement or anything. It's because people don't roll over on big people. I think that out of those 81 people that got taken down for this sex uh, for this you know child sex ring that they were going to do and this human trafficking, I guarantee you the big money moving players that were on top of orchestrating that are not going to get in trouble because nobody's going to tell them who they are. You know, they're so removed yeah. from it. Like that's, that's, the, and like, you know, that's what I think. Like there's all these, you see all these things on Facebook where people are like save the children, save the children. And then it gets political. People are like, well, there's not that much child. Uh, there's not that much, uh, you know, sex trafficking. But it, I, if we're, if we're, if we have what, what, like once every three months we hear an article like this, like, sex ring busted you know human trafficking ring busted mm-hmm. like it's happening and those are just the ones that we're catching those are just the ones that we're finding out about so i agree with I, you, I think that there's people in really high places that are that are keeping that lifestyle and that that disgusting you know mm-hmm. that disgusting thing going uh and i think that that's the real the real the real way to solve it is to get rid of the people on top doing it you know and obviously right. these 81 people they're disgusting. Get rid of them. But, you know, yeah. it's like there's there's big people on top making moves. Um, exactly. Like a four year old. Like what is like. 
yeah, that disgusted me. That just totally just, oh, okay. I just, no words, man. I, I can't even come up with words that disgust me so bad. Well, I watched this Son of Sam documentary, and, you know, the guy who shot up New York City, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Well, he only, if you watch the documentary, spoiler alert, turn it off if you've never seen it and you care. But basically, like, the, the whole gist of the movie is that he wasn't, he didn't act alone. He was just, he was just doing something for a cult he was in. But mm. the people who were making the moves, telling him to do it, like, one of the people, he he didn't even kill this person, but he took he took the hit for it. He's, he's going, he's in prison for this murder. He didn't do it, but... They, they walked up and just shot a girl in broad daylight and turns out it's because it was being filmed by a high profile filmmaker because he was paying a bunch of money by some weirdo billionaire because he wanted to see a snuff film. He wanted to see somebody get murdered. Yeah. So and, and then they also wanted uh, they also wanted things with children and stuff like that. And they asked this son of Sam guy, like, why don't you tell everybody? Why don't you tell them their names? And he's like, oh, I can't tell them their names. And, and every, every, everybody's question is like, man, you're in prison. What are they going to do to you? T- tell the names of these billionaires that are that are having you do this stuff. And he's like, oh, well, they'll, they'll murder my mom. They'll murder my brother. And that's the truth. Like, that's just the same thing with yeah. 81 people. The people mm-hmm. that are pulling the strings on all this, they're not going to roll over on them because they'll kill their families. I was just saying, like, there's this, there's this evil. It's 81 people having having a having a human trafficking ring. That is small potatoes on what's really going on in the big grand scheme of things. Like it's a it's a horrible, you know. Beverly says human trafficking could be next door. Keep your eyes open. It's mm-hmm. definitely, definitely public hanging. I like this Beverly Fox Williams and how she <laughs> thinks. <laughs> I tell you, a few years back, I'm part of the Sling County Coalition on uh, Trafficking, and we had a gal come in and talk to us. She was a trafficking survivor here from here in Kansas, and she was talking to us about her experiences and. She was taught, telling us she was trafficked around the Manhattan area, but not only did they traffic her in Manhattan, they took her to the small towns outside of Manhattan because nobody's going to suspect it going on in a small little town. So they would take her to those towns and traffic her out there. It's, yeah. like, it's a lot would, of enabling. It's not just the people. It's people mm-hmm. that know what's going on, people that know yeah. this behavior is going on and don't do anything about that it. That blew my mind to hear that because I, I never thought of it in, in that kind of context and not just sticking to like, the big city, but let's get them out to the small communities where people aren't going to think to look, you know? Right. But yeah, right. yeah. But I agree with you though. I mean, yeah, this, these, the 81 or 82 that they, they got a hold of, I'm sure, I'm sure a certain amount of those are probably John's, but, but yeah, I agree that they're like low level totem pole guys and they're not gonna, they're not going to give henchmen. up. They, yeah. They're not going to give up the big dogs. They're henchmen, whether, low level players, whether it's fear of, of, you know, them coming after them for squealing or you know those the snitches get stitches thing or whatever but i don't even think it snitches get stitches i don't think they if you get caught harboring a four-year-old that you're selling for sex like do you want to live <laughs> like do you, no. soon that article comes out like there is no point of walking out in, in public again if anybody knows that about you and eventually it's, like, it's going to come out who these people uh, were like honestly i don't think it's self-preservation i don't think they're like oh i don't want to get hurt for snitching i think it's like oh, they'll kill my mom and she has nothing to do with this you know right right so but eventually we'll know who the 82 were that were arrested they'll eventually come out with their names and stuff yeah but it's it's, it's, it's it's just a disgusting thing that that starts at the top, man. And I think that well, I'm I'm, gonna, I'm getting a little too conspiracy theory, but I I do think that there's very yeah. powerful people. And Beverly's right. I mean, it's not just men because sometimes they will use females that were initially brought in as trafficking victims to tr- and turn them into recruiters. Yep. So that's very true. Hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. Um. We have to. We're going to breeze through a couple cases really quick. Um, we're just going to read the flyer and kind of move forward because we have a lot of cases tonight. But we do want to get oh, everybody yeah. on the screen. Um, so let's do about three or four cases real quick. We'll just read them and then go to the next one. And just pay attention. This is called the Power Hour here on KMU. All right. So tell us about Brian Pennington. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very long tonight. I got to find him. Where is he at? Oh, there he is. It's very t- <laughs> Brian Pennington is missing from Wichita, Kansas. It's June eleventh of twenty twenty one. He's seventeen years old. He's five foot nine, hundred and thirty pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen at approximately eight forty five on June eleventh. If you have any information or p- eight forty five PM, let me clarify that. If you have any information regarding Brian's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at three one six 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 zero nine four five two. 
or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. See if we can't get something going on him. And we've done flyers from the past, and she is again, Cherish T.L. Mason. And she's missing from Wichita, Kansas since June 27th of 2021. She's 15 years old. She's 5'4 to 5'5, weighs between 115 and 120 pounds. She has black hair and brown eyes. Um, she was last seen at approximately 10.30 p.m. on June 27th, and she is believed to be with Lamia, or Lamia E. Nave, who is also considered a missing endangered runaway. If you have any information regarding Cherish's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And let's go ahead and get uh, Lamia Nave up there too, since they're believed to be together. You have her up there? Okay. Yep. All right. Lamia Nave, again, missing since June 27th of 20, uh, 21. She's 13, 5'7", 170 pounds, black hair and brown eyes, and she was last seen approximately 10.30 p.m. on June 27th, and it's believed that she may be with Cherish Mason, who is also considering a missing endangered runaway. If you have any information regarding Lamia's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011 or KBI at 785-296-4017. So if you see either Lamia or Lamaya or Cherish, you see one or the other or both, you know, get that information called in and let them know where they are so they can be found and uh, taken back to where they need to be. Get, some, get them back someplace safe. Okay, up next we got Dante Dupree. Now, we've done flyers for Dante in the past. Yes, we have. You are correct, sir. And he's missing again since June 22nd of 2021. He was 17 when he went missing. He's now 18. He's 5 foot 9 inches tall, 165 pounds, black hair and brown eyes. Dante is called TJ by his friends. If you have any information regarding uh, Dante's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call Topeka, Kansas Police Department. Is 785-368-9247 or 785-368-9551 or KBI at 785-296-4017 and let's see if we can't get some information lined up on him as to where he is and get him back where he needs to be. And hopefully we can do that. Agreed. Yes, Agreed. yes. Um, Don Tavian. I feel we we've covered him before, right? Yeah, man, he is on the move again. Octavian Wade missing from Topeka, Kansas, since June twelfth of twenty twenty one. He's seventeen years old. He's six foot one, one hundred and sixty pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. Um, it's believed that he may still be in the local Topeka area, or he might be in the Lawrence area. If you have any information regarding Don Tavion's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department at 785-368-9247 or 785-368-9551 or 785-368-9200 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can not get Don Tavion found. Get him back to where he needs to be. Coming up on a month. <laughs> yeah. Getting close. Tell us about Dylan Titus. That one was the one that I just did right before the show. Annette Lawless actually sent me his information. <laughs> um, he's missing from Wichita since June 28, 2021. He's 20 years old, 5'11", 120. Has brown hair and green eyes. He was last seen leaving a hospital on June 28, 2021. In Wichita, there is concern for his mental health. Um, he does have a tattoo of three dots on his left hand between um, his first finger and his thumb. 
you have any information regarding Dylan's disappearance or you know his whereabouts, please call 911 immediately or call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-263-6011 or KBI at 785-296-4017. See if we can't help get him found and, and make sure he's all right and safe. Yeah, that's scary. You know, you get out of the hospital. You know, that's always a, a fragile time whenever you get out of the hospital and then to not be seen. Yeah. Or the first place you should go is home and rest, you know. Yeah. That's a little that's a little scary. So yeah, Wichita, keep your eyes peeled. Dylan Titus missing. Yeah. Tell us about Elijah Moses Proctor. Yeah. And we actually covered him before too. And he was found, and now he's on the run again. Missing from Wichita, Kansas, since June 29, 2021. He's 15 years old, five foot eight, weighs 125 pounds, brown hair, and brown eyes. He was last seen on the 29th between 9:30 and 10 o'clock in the morning. If you have any information regarding Elijah's disappearance, you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456. Or 316-660-9478. Or 316-263-6011. I'm going to throw one more in there. 316-660-9452. Or 785-296-4017. And see if we can't get him found and back to where he needs to be. Come on, Elijah. Yeah. I mean, only being 15 and... Out there running. Not the be best outside. idea. Way too hot to be outside. Oh, yeah. Humid. There's nasty outside everywhere. Let's yeah. talk about having Kaler. All righty. I'm going to find her flyer here. From Fort Scott, Kansas. Oh, sorry about that. I had allergies are getting the best of Ricky, folks. Starting to. I'm listening from Fort Scott, Kansas, since June 24th, 2021. <laughs> she's 17 years old. She's five foot seven to five foot ten. She weighs between 130 and 140 pounds. She has blood. <laughs> Excuse me. Dirty blonde hair and blue eyes. If you have any information regarding Heaven's disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Fort Scott, Kansas Police Department at 620-223. 1700 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. See if we can't help get her found. Sorry about the sneezes, guys. Trying oh. your best, buddy. Trying your best. Now, that was our power hour. We did cover a lot of cases. Need I remind you, though, all of the cases we cover are pulled strictly from the Facebook page. So if you, if you have any of those flyers yep. you want to look at deeper, just go check out the Facebook page. And then, by all means, share those flyers. Uh, by the way, um, you can go to patreon.com slash KMU pod if you want to get some perks. And also check out check out Kansas Missing and Unsolved podcast uh, on all the all the mm-hmm. all the podcast platforms out there that uh, that you, if you use it, we probably are on it. So just look for Kansas Missing and Unsolved right. podcast. Uh, let's talk about this Jane Doe case real quick. Okay. This is one that somebody brought to my attention not too awful long ago and read through it and Decided to go ahead and make a flyer for it. It's an unidentified female. They're estimating she's between 14 to 17 years old. Um, her remains were found on June 18th of this year in Wharton County, Texas. And around 10 o'clock in the morning, they were found near County Road 225 near Hunger to- Hungerford, Texas. The remains were taken to the Fort Bend County Medical Examiner's Office for further in- investigation and autopsy. The remains were too badly decomposed to determine her race. But the girl had dark brown to black hair, at least shoulder length, and was believed to be about 14 to 17 years old. The autopsy showed she'd been dead for several weeks, maybe even months. She had been shot multiple times in the head. She had three silver rings on on her hands. One ring had two hearts, and the other had white stones right there in the picture. She was wearing a T-shirt with the Disney character Stitch, along with the word Ohana in blue. The victim was also wearing shorts with images of coffee mugs and donuts and a lightweight tan hooded jacket with the brand name Love Tree. Investigators do not think she is a local girl. Deputies are now checking for potential matches of missing persons across the region and the U.S. Investigator says it's possible that she was a human trafficking victim brought to Wharton County and her family has no idea. 
you have any information on this case or you recognize the rings or the clothing or you could help identify the girl, please call Wharton County, Texas Sheriff's Office at 979-532-1550. See if we can't help get her identified. Do you know if they got any DNA? I haven't heard anything on that yet. I'm sure they're going to probably do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's sad. My niece is 14, man. Yeah. Imagine someone shooting her, man. With the, what the, what is wrong with this world? Yeah, shot multiple times in the head. Wow. Well, tell us about Jeremy Samuel Veal. We have covered this this fella a couple times. Fifteen yeah. year old, fifteen year old with a mustache. I didn't get a mustache until I was like twenty one. But anyway, no yeah, problem. just a few times. He's missing from Oswego, Kansas, since June twenty sixth of twenty twenty one. He's fifteen years old. He's five foot five inches tall. Weighs one hundred and eighty five pounds. He has dark brown hair and brown eyes. I just believe he may be in the North Topeka area. Yeah, uh, if you have any information regarding Jeremy's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Oswego, Kansas Police Department at 620-795-2131 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't help get Jeremy located again and back to where he needs to be. Oh, Irene Perez is in the house. <laughs> So let's go ahead and cover Alex's fly real fast for her. Missing from Ulysses, Kansas, since December 1st, 2020. Uh, he's 35 years old. He's 5'11", weighs 235 pounds. Black hair that he shaves pretty much bald and brown eyes. Uh, he last contacted a family member via telephone on December 1st and advised he'd be coming to their home to do some laundry. He never arrived at the family member's home in Ulysses, and Alexander has not been heard from or seen by family or friends since then. Alexander had been staying with family and friends prior to his disappearance. It's believed that he may still be in the local Ulysses area, or he may be in the Garden City, Kansas, or surrounding area. Alexander, again, he's 35, he's 5'11", weighs 235 pounds, has black hair that he shaves off, and brown eyes. He has a tattoo of a bumblebee on his face underneath his left eye. He also has Perez tattooed on one of his arms, and he also has that tattoo going along his collarbone there. If you have any information regarding Alexander's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Grant County, Kansas Sheriff's Office at 620-356-3500 or the Ulysses, Kansas Police Department at 620-356-4600 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't help get him found and back to where he needs to be. Any updates, and Irene? You're very welcome, Irene. Anything we can do to help? Yeah, Irene, yeah. let us know if there's any updates because I've been, yeah. I've been really having you on my on my thoughts lately. You had said that they were they had some news for you that was bad news, but you know, I, I and obviously don't share anything that would affect the case. But yeah, she says no, nothing at all. Yeah, nothing at all. That's too bad. I'm sure we'll get there, Irene. We'll get there. I'm sure she's just beside herself waiting for something to come up. Yeah. Nothing has been said. Mm. Well, that's not good. Um, okay. Well, I wanted to go back to... Um, what was she? Because she had that. Yeah. She said before I ate. Oh, she's talking about he's in foster care. Jeremy. Okay, there it is. So she's talking about Jeremy. She said he's in foster care. And then she said, before I aged out, I remember seeing him at a home in KVC in the KVC office in LA talking about Jeremy. Oh wow. Well. Meg's our guest from tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah. She needs a podcast. She knows all these people, Ricky. She could do a <laughs> podcast from the she could do a show yeah. from the perspective of somebody from foster care. Because obviously, you know, we talked to her tonight. I didn't know they had that much, you know, 
support leaving the system, you know, like, and I didn't apparently it sounds like you have to earn it a little bit, which, yeah. but it sounds like, you know, you have the potential to have some, some good, uh, you know, going to school, stuff like that. You have like some, some good starting points. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, I think, I think her doing her, her every, I, I enjoyed hearing her talk about, you know, just just her her side of the of the of the story, you know, because we don't know anything about it at the end of the day. We can sit here and speculate right. and think all day, but we don't know anything. Irene, uh, you want to go ahead and pin that Irene comment? I'm gonna get his flyer back up here. Yeah, yeah. She said, "Doesn't answer their calls." The KB high. Oh wow. Hmm. That's interesting. You know. I used to be really upset by the lack of communication with, you know, KBI and victims' families. I'm close personal. For, well, I was close personal friends with the the mother of a of a, a homicide victim, and she ended up not liking me because she she thought I was kind of crude and stuff on Facebook, which I get a hundred percent. Not everybody. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but, um, you know, she has been dealing with the KBI for 50 plus years, trying to get answers on her daughter's case. And they're very vague, you know, they're very vague with what they tell her. And I realize it's because one, they can't jeopardize the case. If they tell you something that's big deal, big deal stuff that's going to help them in the courtroom, and then that information gets put out there, mm-hmm. could damage your case. Right. Um, so I like to. I, I used to think that that the if law law enforcement was you know not very forthcoming with information because they were like trying to be mean, but now I understand it's because they co- they hold their cards very close to their vest. Um, they have to. They can't release all the information, every detail out there, because then everybody knows. They they want to. They they only want them, and and the the culprit to know the true story of what happened, and they want to get that out of that person. So it's it's a very frustrating process. But just keep believing. It sounds like they have some people in question. It sounds like some some things are being asked. Um, but as you know, these things could take forever to to figure out. But just know that we're here for you. And we're gonna keep sharing Alexander's, uh, you know, flyer because we, if anybody has information, uh, you know, please contact the KBI. I do have their number at the bottom of the screen right now. Right. All right. Tell us about Justin Scott. All right. She said, that is true. It takes a lot of time. It is. Just keep your head up. I mean, lack lack of communication. Like I said, I, I know a girl that, a woman, she's, she's, she's a woman. Um, she's been trying to get an answer out of KBI for 52 years. Um, I might even be able to introduce you to her. I, I, like I said, she's a little mad at me because I post things with curse words on Facebook. Uh, but... <laughs> You know she's old school, Ricky. But no, I mean she she knows what you're going through. I mean it's 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 hard to get information out of the out of the out of the people. But you know I, I like to believe at the end of the day that it's it's good. Uh, it's it's for good cause. They just want to keep their cards close. And we appreciate you showing up and and you know reminding us every week that your son still needs answers. Yeah, looking at something here real quick. Okay, yeah, he's Justin Scott. Cy- I don't know if it's Cywick, that's all I'm guessing. Yeah, missing from Kansas City, Kansas, since June 20th of 2021. He's 32 years old. He's five foot ten inches tall, weighs 170 pounds, black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen on Sunday, June 20th at the Days End, located at 7721 Elizabeth Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, again, he's 32 years old, five foot ten inches tall, weighs 170 pounds, has black hair and brown eyes. Has a tattoo across his chest that says blessed. Justin was last known to be wearing a red tank top, uh, similar to the center photo there, and khaki shorts. If you have any information regarding Justin's disappearance, you know of his whereabouts, or you think you may have seen him or have any information regarding his case, 
please contact Detective Minnick with the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department at 913-573-6036 or the TIPS hotline at 816-474-8477 and see if we can't help get him located. We're going to go back and do a speed round because we are at an hour. we got to wrap this up. Uh, tell us about, how do you pronounce it, Kaja? I love that name, how it's spelled. Yeah, I want to say it's Kaja. <laughs> Whatever it is, that is a very unique unique name, and I think it's cool. And Irene has made the comment down there that she appreciates everything you two have done for us. So you're very welcome. You are very, very welcome. Anything we can do to, to continue to help, we'll do. I have okay. a lot of questions about Pittsburgh, Kansas. Anyway, tell your story. But I, I've been hearing a lot about Pittsburgh, Kansas recently. Let's let's let's, let's talk about Kaja. Okay, she's missing from Pittsburgh, Kansas, on June eighteenth of twenty twenty one. She's sixteen years old, five foot seven, one hundred and eighty pounds, and has brown hair, brown eyes. Sorry about my phone. <laughs> If you have any information regarding Kaja's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Pittsburgh, Kansas Police Department at 620-231-1700 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't help get some information generated as to where Kaja may be. Right. Yeah. And that's Meg, <laughs> our guest tonight. She's messaging me on came using why she's saying Kaja was in foster care as well. She remembers her. She needs a podcast. She knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. She knows everybody. Yeah. Kaja. Well, yeah, Pittsburgh, let us know. Um, but yeah, man, I'm going to do some research on Pittsburgh. I've just been hearing so much about Pittsburgh. Can and it's just, I don't know. My dad, my re my, my birth father lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So that's why every time I see Pittsburgh, Kansas, my brain kind of, does mm -hmm. a little bit of a what? Like, you know, a dog turns her head sideways. I'm like, huh? yeah. Pittsburgh. Oh, Kansas. What? We have a Kansas. We have a Pittsburgh in Kansas. Uh, let's talk about Kayla Titus. All right. Not just in Kansas. Yeah. And, and we actually, the first time we covered her, um, it was out of Wichita, but now it's Hutchinson. Um, since June 29th of 2021, she's 15 years old, uh, five foot five, 140 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed that she may be with an adult male or males, <laughs> excuse me, either in Wichita or Hutchinson. Um, her brown hair is was last known to be dyed red now. I want to make that little note there. If you have any information regarding Kayla's disappearance, you know her whereabouts, please call the Hutchinson, Kansas Police Department at 620-694-2816 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And again, I apologize for the sneeze. It's odd because I haven't sneezed much all day long today, and then tonight all of a sudden, here they come. Do you have a fever? No. Nope, I don't. So there's just some allergies, you're sure? Yeah. Saturday, I had, or Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning, I had a sore throat, was sneezing my head off. Ugh. Did we already cover Kasia? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> no, when do we cover? Right before Kayla. No, this one. How do you spell? How do you, Kadia? Oh, could could I don't know, Kadia or? Okay, I thought. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. You're getting me all confused. Don't do that. <laughs> well, they go in alphabetical order, and I don't even mean to do that, but maybe I should spice it up and mix them up. Okay, and she is missing from Topeka, Kansas, since June fourteenth of twenty twenty one. She's thirteen years old. Five foot six, two hundred and four pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. Just believe the Kadia is still in Topeka. If you have any information regarding her disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department at seven eight five three six eight nine two four seven or seven eight five three six eight nine two zero zero or the KBI at seven eight five two nine six four zero one seven. And see if we can't help get her located and back to where she needs to be. Man. And then we're going to go lightning around a little bit more. We're going to talk about Linda Dillard Kleinbell. Okay. Next, missing out of uh, Table Rock, Nebraska. Yep. We're going up to Nebraska for that one. Uh, this is June 16th of 2021. She's 55 years old, 5'7, 
five foot tall, 130 pounds, brown hair, might possibly be dyed blonde, and blue eyes. Um, she was last seen about 3.30 in the morning on June 16th. She was last believed to be on foot. And she does have ties to Hiawatha, Kansas area. If you have any information regarding Linda's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Richardson County, Nebraska Sheriff's Office at 402-245-2479 or the Pawnee County, Nebraska Sheriff's Office at 402-852-2969 and see if we can't help get her located and hopefully she's safe wherever she is at. I love it. Our audience is like, <clears throat> Khadija, boys. <laughs> Jay Oliver's like, Khadija. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're, Sorry we're about trying. that. We're trying. Yeah. Now, There's do you so many see? unique spellings with so many. Like, I, I work at a call center, so every day somebody's like, my name is like, they say their name like Khadija. I'm just like, please spell that because I know that it's very unique and I am the worst speller in the world. I do want to say a quick thank you to the Richardson County, Nebraska Sheriff's Office because they are sharing our flyer on their Facebook. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. So I do Sweet. want to thank them for that. That's that awesome. Cool. Yep. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about thank Lipsy Mendoza. I've done flyer for her before in the past, too. It's been a while, but I have been missing since June 24th of 21, 2021 from Topeka, Kansas. She's 18 years old. She's 5'5", 115 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. I believe she may still be in Topeka or she might be in the Junction City, Kansas area. If you have any information regarding Lipsy's disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department at 785-368-9247. Or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't get her located and back to where she needs to be. At the very least, make sure she's safe. I mean, she is yeah. 18, but so, I mean, as long as they know she's all right. Yeah, let's see. Text somebody this, hey, I'm safe. Yeah, get a hold of Topeka PD, you know, let them know what's going on so they know you're all right. Right. Uh, let's talk about Lloyd McGee the third. Now I feel like we covered. Have we just covered this recently, or has as have we covered him in the past? We've covered him before, and he was recovered, and he's missing again. So <laughs> here we are again. He, Lloyd it's McGee the third like. missing from Lawrence, Kansas, since June twelfth of twenty twenty one. He's thirteen years old, uh, five foot six to five foot seven, weighs between one hundred and thirty five and one hundred and forty five pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. It's believed he may still be in the Lawrence area or he may be in the Kansas City, Missouri area. If you have any information regarding Lloyd's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Lawrence, Kansas Police Department at 785-832-7509 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't help get him found and back to where he needs to be again. 13's young, even though this guy doesn't really look 13. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, he looks more grown up than I did when I was 13. But he, yeah, you're 13. Like, you should. Yeah, I saw first saw pictures and I was like, he's 13, really? Right. <laughs> mustache and everything. I was like, whoa. So, we see all these kids on here that are like 13, 14 with mustaches, man. I'm like, man, I was like 21 when I had I know, a, right? a was healthy me. mustache. That's <laughs> yeah, it's me. Let's talk about Matthew Messer, uh, Matthew. Pittsburgh, another Pittsburgh, Kansas. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I'm intrigued. Yeah, he's been missing from Pittsburgh, Kansas since June 23rd of 2021. He's 15 years old, five foot eight, weighs 155 pounds, blonde hair and brunette blue eyes. He was last seen about 5:30 in the morning on June 23rd. Um, it's believed that he may be with Matthew Barnes, who is also considered missing endangered. Uh, Matthew is 15 years old, 5'8", 155 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes. If you have any information regarding Matthew's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Pittsburgh, Kansas Police Department at 620-231-1700 or their TIPS hotline at 620-231-8477 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't get him located. Hopefully another another case we've covered a couple times. Uh, we have Nancy Miller. Yeah, Which and that involved. was actually telling Derek before the show. I had to go back and and delete her previous flyers because they had different missing since dates on, and I was not notified she'd ever been found. So I had to go back and wipe all them out and do the new one. So that's always a good sign, though, that they've been found before. 
you know, been missing since April 1st of this year. She's 16. She's five foot nine to six foot tall, 150 pounds, light brown hair and uh, brown eyes. It's believed she may still be in the local Wichita area. She has a tattoo on her forearm, chest, and left hand. She also has her nose and ears pierced. If you have any information regarding Nancy's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456 or 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't get her found and back to where she needs to be. Yeah. And hopefully we can. Mm. Let's by talk my, about, I think by my count, we have about th- maybe three more to go. Three more. We have Nevaeh up next out of Wichita, Kansas. Pretty young, 14. You guys are way too young to be running off. Yeah, since June 25th, 2021. Um, again, she's 14, five foot four, 130 pounds, black hair, brown eyes. Uh, she was last seen at her family home on June 25th at approximately six o'clock. Six, excuse me, six o'clock in the evening. <laughs> if you have any information regarding Nevada's disappearance, you know her whereabouts. Please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. Keep your eyes open, Wichita, 14-year-old missing. Never good. That is really young. Not a good situation. If anybody sees Nevaeh, contact uh, the police. Um, yeah, 14 is just too young to be out in Wichita. We see a lot of Wichita you know, people that are young out there by themselves, and makes me nervous. I, I mean, I, yeah. I don't, don't want to be in Wichita alone. Not that Wichita is a terrible place, but I mean, it's just a lot of, there's a lot going on. It's a big city, you know? Yeah. We just discussed a lot about what was going on earlier. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on in a big metropolis like that. Let's talk yeah. about Sarah Nicole Perkins. This one is an Ohio case actually. And okay, here we go. Yeah, it's missing since, uh, June 25th of 2021, 17 years old, 5'2", 113 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed that she snuck out to go to a hotel with overage people, possibly 20 to 21 year olds. She was last seen in the Franklin, Ohio area, but could possibly be in the Springboro, Ohio area. Excuse me. She has a small tattoo of the words, love you more with an infinity sign on the inside of her right arm. If you have any information regarding Sarah's disappearance, or you know of her whereabouts. Please call the Carlisle, Ohio Police Department at 937-425-2525 and see if we can help get her home. I know her dad uh, is frantic and with worry, and so is her mom. Her dad's been posting just about daily on his Twitter under at Mikey Perk okay. on Twitter. And I, I, I just know he's going frantic. Um, and and so, is, so is her mom because I, I have briefly spoke with her mom. Wow. On Messenger, so I, I and she thanked me for making the flyer and everything, and this, she said they just want her home. So yeah, that's scary. Go to a yeah, and, and missing. And the thing that disgusts me about it is, I, I saw on Mikey Perk's Twitter where some idiot has posted on their YouTube channel a video, and it's titled "Last Moments of Sarah Perkins." Uh, how is that phrase? Last moments of Sarah Perkins's life caught on video or something like that. And basically it's somebody with a chainsaw hacking up a mannequin. What? Yeah. Cutting the limbs off a mannequin and stuff. That's yeah. creepy. Yeah. I saw that and I'm like, you've got to be freaking <sighs> seriously kidding me that somebody, well, I guess that's not the first time, time that, I guess that's not the first time because when he posted that on his Twitter, he said another video. So I don't know what the, the first one was, but that was the, the second one, I guess. And I, I just was like, I commented on it and I, I, I said, you know, the police department needs to investigate that. And if not the police department, the FBI and find out who's doing that and, yeah. and just, you know, charge him with something, right? <laughs> Whether mental duress or or cyberbullying or something, you know, they need to be charged with something. Right. That's just ridiculous. 
I mean, here you got, you know, two parents worried to death about their daughter and, you know, somebody's pulling some stupid crap like that. Right. It's just ridiculous. And I've seen something. He he has a some kind of a stream that he does, and he's been using his stream platform to keep people updated with his daughter's disappearance and stuff. And there's been a lot of times he's literally been in tears the whole time he's been talking on these streams. And, you know, I just I couldn't imagine. I mean, it's been, what, a week now. And, you know, she's still missing, and he's just he's frantic. Right. Well, I mean, anybody posting stuff like that, that's, that's, that's not cool. That's like really, yeah, pretty so if, you know, if anybody has any friends or family up there in the Ohio area, you know, share the crap out of it up there, you know, just share the crap out of it. Let's get her found. We have one more case, y'all. Uh, this is uh, another youngster, 12 year old, Wichita, Kansas, Slayton Caps. Tell us about Slayton. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm in Mystic, it's June 26th of 2021. He is 12 years old, five foot four, 125 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes. And he was last seen at approximately nine o'clock in the morning on the 26th of June. Um, again, he's 12, five foot four, 125 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. If anybody has any information regarding Slayton's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9452 or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't help get him found and back to where he needs to be. I mean, being 12 and being out there, that's, I mean, being 15, 16, 17, that's bad enough that to be 12... Yeah, and to be missing nearly a week—that's not yeah, good. Not good. Not good. Too many young people missing in the state of Kansas right now. Uh, yeah. Not even say we went all over, but that—that uh, that is our caseload tonight, everybody. Um, we got a little bit more talking to do. We're going out to quite a few people right now on this lovely Thursday night. Um, yeah. Lovely Thursday night. We're broadcasting to you live from Salina, Kansas, and Phoenix, Arizona. You're watching Kansas Missing and Unsolved Podcast. We'll be right back after this. Always good to see the located safe reel. Am I crazy or was Kayla Titus in the located safe reel? She was. That was her previous, but she is still actively missing. So. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, Don Armstrong, she brings up that human trafficking. I wonder if any were found in that raid. I, I wonder the same thing. And like I said, I don't know if we'll ever hear of any names of the, the juveniles because they are juveniles, but you know, I, I hope that some of them were so we could you know, get them off the list if we find out who they are. Yeah. That's... Yeah. And we did have one located deceased this week that uh, Keegan Oyugi, that was, he was initially from Wichita, but living in Minnesota. Uh, they found his vehicle. I can't remember where exactly where it was found, but it looked like it was a single vehicle accident and he perished in that accident. So. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and friends, you know, as they mourn his mourn the loss of, of Keegan. As he was an outstanding basketball player in his high school days in Wichita. And... You know, right now what we do is about every few months we do a located deceased reel, but I'd like to dig deeper on those. Maybe have maybe have a, a few people, few of their loved ones send us some videos. Mm -hmm. For the located deceased drill, you know, I mean, you get to know these people a little bit, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, we're we're sharing flyers and sometimes there's some really dark outcomes, but these are people, you know, like these are real people yeah. that have real friends, real problems. And, yeah. you know, I I think we should get to know these uh, the located deceased people because, you know, they're, they they can't tell their story anymore. We should we should tell that story, you know, for them, you know. That would be a good idea. I like that idea. So if any friends or family of any of the ones that we've posted that are are located deceased, if you want us to, 
you know, kind of give some background of who they were and, and the kind of people they were, just let us know. And we'll, when we do the next located uh, deceased reel, we'll do something like that. I like that idea. Well, yeah. this has been a great show. Really good show. Really good show. I, I'm impressed by it. I'm really glad that Omega joined us tonight. And uh, Omega, if you're still watching, thank you again. Appreciate it. <laughs> I really do. Right. That, was, that was awesome. I'm glad you reached out to me. I really am. It's not too often that I get to speak to folks that I've made flyers for. And it's, it's right. She neat. was she was awesome, and I'm telling you, like she needs to do something. She like she needs to go into some kind of advocacy for foster children because she knows the whole system. Like, yeah. She knows all about that. She knows half the kids that we talked about. Like, oh, I know them. Right. Oh, I know them. Like she 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 you could she could have a future in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, advocacy. I mean, people, people always love to hear, uh, you know, success stories from people who were in it, you know, that's a big, um, big motivator. If somebody's telling me something about how they overcame something and they actually lived through it, then that, 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 that means a lot to me. Right. And Don's saying she agrees a hundred percent and hope they do let us know if any were found in the raid. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to hear, you know, if some of our missing were found in that raid, but like I said, being that they're juveniles, I don't know if they're, if they will actually release names or not, but hopefully we'll see. Just have to wait and see what happens. All right. Yeah. But anyway, I do want to thank everybody tonight for joining us and yeah, we ran late and ran a little long, but that's all right. <laughs> Just share the show out and encourage everybody to watch the replay and, and, things like that and we appreciate all the shares the views the reshares you know and all that good stuff our next show is going to be let's see today is the first of july so our next show is going to be on the 6th of july my daughter's ricky, birthday why don't you go ahead and just flip it right now <laughs> just flip it it's, it's it's not june ricky I know it. You don't have to do it right now, but when we get off the air, before okay. we hang up tonight, you're flipping that calendar. <laughs> hey, I was too busy looking for stupid snakes, all right? <laughs> yeah, by the way, yeah, if you if you missed the first part of the show, Ricky, he's, his daughter found some snakes in the yard and brought yeah. them inside and lost them, so Ricky's going to sleep with two live snakes just somewhere in his yeah, house. Two little tiny garter snakes. I can just figure out where they hid. Uh, we we'll just burn it down and start over. <laughs> If it was my house, I would. <laughs> because I'm only renting, I can't. So, <laughs> oh man, that's that's scary. Yeah, not my favorite thing in the world, that's for sure. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you all for joining us tonight. We will see you on July 6th. Until then, stay safe. God bless. Take care, and we will see you next week. Well. I don't think it, I thought it, that's different. I said what I said and I meant it, or lamented. Words given weight without thought in a person, the way that I talk and the way that I ought to be able to pause and to say that the fault can be placed on my arms and this playful assault to this race in this arm. Pray for the day they could wait for the calm. You can't control the storm, only weather it, weather it. It's five weeks and five days of rain sideways. A scorched earth search for death or water left with all the thorns. When the petals gone, settle on the breath of autumn. If the crown fits, wear it, the crown fits. If the crown fits.